In today's video, we will be connecting a Spring Boot application to an AWS RDS database. We will also create the database from scratch. Let's get started. Go to AWS console, search for AWS console and click the first link. Log into your account using your credentials. You will see a page like this. Click on RDS in recent services. If you don't see RDS here, then search for it in the search box at the top. Click on create database. We will be using standard create method. There are multiple database engines such as Aurora, which is AWS proprietary database, MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, etc. We will go with MySQL. Scroll down. There are multiple templates. Choose it as per the environment for which you are creating the database. We will be using free tier here and you should also choose the same if you are creating it for learning purpose. Choose a name for database instance, which should be unique across your AWS account. Remember that this is not the name of your database. This is the username for the database. Provide a password. The password should be at least 8 characters long. DB instance class will be dbt3.micro since it falls under free tier. Again, you can select it as per your storage and processing requirements. Leave the storage values as default. We don't want to connect any EC2 instance, so leave this setting as is. VPC will also be default. Don't forget to make the database public accessible by clicking this radio button. If you choose no, then you will have to add security groups for allowing connection from external IP addresses. With public access set to yes, the database will allow public connections. Leave VPC security group setting to default. Authentication type will be password. That means that we will be using a password to connect to the database. This is the estimated cost for this database instance and it depends for the amount of usage and that is after you exhaust free tier usage as mentioned here. But if you follow this video, then you will be under free tier because we will be deleting the database instance after the video. Click on create database. It is now creating a database and will take a while in doing so. It has created the database and is now creating a backup. The database is created and is available. Click here. Here it shows various details. This is the database connection URL at which it will be accessible and this is the port at which it can be connected. Here is its configuration such as MySQL engine version, RAM, CPU, username, etc. Now let's create a connection and a schema. Open MySQL Workbench or any other client that you prefer. Create a new connection. Provide host name. You can get the host name from here. Port, which is 3306, and username. Click OK. Enter the password that you chose while creating the database. It is trying to establish a connection. Connection is successful and we will now create a schema. Right click and select create schema. Enter a name for the schema. Click apply. Apply again. The schema is created. Now let's try to connect our Spring Boot application to this AWS RDS database. For this, first we need to add two dependencies to our project. This project is built with Gradle and so it has build.gradle file. If you are using Maven, then there would be bomb.xml file. First dependency is the MySQL driver since our database engine is MySQL. Second is Spring Data JPA. Adding this dependency will automatically create a data source on application startup. You can also create a data source or a database connection on your own. In that case, you do not need this dependency. Right click the project, and select Gradle and refresh. This will download the jars related to these dependencies and add them to Classbar. Again, if you are using Maven, then you need to select Maven and then update project. Next, we need to add database connection parameters in application.properties file using Spring predefined properties, which are spring.datasource.url. Its value will be the complete connection string containing the driver type, followed by DB URL, which we can copy from AWS directly. Colon port. This also we can get from AWS followed by the schema that we just created. Second property is spring.datasource.username containing our database username. 
then spring.datasource.password, which is our DB password. Finally, the class name of driver, which is for MySQL. Start the application. It has started successfully, and if you look at the logs, it shows that database connection has been successfully established. Go to AWS console and navigate to database list page. Refresh this. Look, it shows one connection, which is the connection that we created from Spring Boot application. Now, to further verify the database connection, stop the application and change the database username. Restart the application. It fails to start and look at the error which says access denied for user, which means that it is actually trying to connect to AWS RDS database. Again, go back to AWS RDS database list. It shows zero connections. So, now we have successfully created a database connection and we can now use Spring Data repositories to perform database operations such as fetching, inserting, updating, and deleting records from tables. I will not cover this part in this video, but if you want to learn that too, then let me know in the comment section below. Finally, go back to AWS and delete the database that we created. Otherwise, it will keep on adding to AWS cost. Select the database, click on Actions, and select Delete. Uncheck this if you don't want snapshot, which means preserving the current state of your database. We do not want any backup since the schema is empty right now. Acknowledge that the data will be gone and you know what you are doing. Type delete me just for confirmation and click delete. AWS will now start deleting the database and again it will take some time. The database is now deleted. Refresh the page. It is gone. Hope you like the video and I will see you in the next one.